Hi, good morning and happy Sunday. Welcome back. Last week we learned about some gifts that God has given us. And today we're gonna discover why God gave us these gifts. Our gifts are for helping others. And our gifts make us all a part of a big team, like one body. Does anyone like getting gifts that you put together like Legos? They're fun to build as long as you aren't missing any pieces, right? Every piece is important. Who has ever been part of a team? Like what kind of team have you been on? A soccer team, a baseball team, even like a debate team. What kind of position or role did you take? Were you the captain? Were you a goalie? Were you first baseman or the outfielder? Did everyone on the team do the same exact thing? What if you had a sports team where everyone played the same position? Would that team be any good? No. Everyone on the team does their part. When the team wins, everyone on the team wins, right? Remember last week's big idea? Everyone has special gifts. Anyone remember why God gives us special gifts? That's right. He gives us special gifts so we can help each other and help other people. Well, this week's big idea, God uses my special gifts to help others. We're gonna read about it again in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 12 through 31. Grab your Bible and I'll read it. A reading from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 31. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts, and all the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many. We were all baptized by the Spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek, or slave or free, and we were all given one Spirit to drink. Certainly, the body isn't one part, but many. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, does that mean it's not part of the body? If the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, does that mean it's not part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, what would happen to the hearing? If the whole body were an ear, what would happen to the sense of smell? But as it is, God has placed each one of the parts in the body just like he wanted. If all were one and the same body part, what would happen to the body? But as it is, there are many parts, but one body. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Or in turn, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Instead, the parts of the body that people think are the weakest are the most necessary. The parts of the body that we think are less honorable are the ones we honor the most. The private parts of our body that aren't presentable are the ones that are given the most dignity. The parts of our body that are presentable don't need this. But God has put the body together, giving great honor to the parts with less honor. So that there won't be division in the body and so that the parts might have mutual concern for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part gets the glory, all the parts celebrate with it. You are the body of Christ and parts of each other. In the church, God has appointed first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, the ability to help others, leadership skills, different kinds of tongues. All aren't apostles, are they? All aren't prophets, are they? All aren't teachers, are they? All don't perform miracles, do they? And all don't have gifts of healing, do they? All don't speak in tongues, and all don't interpret. Use your ambition to try to get greater gifts, and I'm going to show you an even better way. Just think, back when the church started, right after Jesus went to heaven, some people were fighting over who was better or whose gifts were better. But God doesn't want us to compare gifts. God gave us all different gifts so that we could work together and to help others. To help understand, the Bible tells us to look at our own body. 
we're each made out of many parts, our arms, our legs, our heart, our brain, our stomach. And that's all how all these parts are still one body. We're all different parts of one body, the body of Christ. Now imagine that if your whole body was one big eyeball, how would you hear? How would you smell things? God put every part of our body exactly where it should be. And every part matters. Just like all your body parts need each other, we all need each other too. God made us with all gifts. Why does God give us gifts? That's right, so we can help others. So I want you to think about it like this. Sometimes the church is called the body of Jesus. So think about Jesus as the head and we're the rest of the body. So each of us is like a different part and we're meant to work together to help each other out. Let me read you another verse, Romans 12 verses six through eight. It says, we have different gifts that are consistent with God's grace that has been given to us. If your gift is prophecy, you should prophesy in your portion to your faith. If your gift is service, devote yourself to serving. If your gift is teaching, devote yourself to teaching. If your gift is encouragement, devote yourself to encouraging. The one who is giving should do it with no strings attached. The leader should lead with passion. The one showing mercy should be cheerful. The Bible says each of us has gifts from God, like we talked about last week too, but it's not for us to keep to ourselves. When someone gives you a gift, what is the first thing you usually do? You open it up. You take it out of the box and you use it. Otherwise, the gift has no purpose. When we get gifts from God, we can't just put it away like gifts that we never take out of the box. We have to unbox our gifts and we use them to help others. God uses our gifts to help others. So, I have a challenge for you, a weekly challenge, one out of two. I know we just had a big holiday a few weeks ago, Christmas, but it's time to make another gift list. This time though, we're making a list of gifts that you have to give to others. So tell me, what gifts or special abilities do you think God gave you? Do you help your friends with homework? Do you have knowledge? Do you cheer them up when they're feeling sad? Do you tell others that Jesus loves them? Do you give generously or do you pray for people? I want to see your gift list. Bring it to me, show it to me, and I will have a gift for you. All right, guys, I hope you had a good morning. Let's end our morning with prayer. So fold your hands, all right? Dear God, thank you again for the amazing gifts you had given us. We love getting gifts, but it is fun to be able to give our gifts to our friends too. Help us use our gifts for us to be able to see who needs them. Thank you for all the people who have helped me with their gifts. And thank you for the gift of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. I will see you again on Wednesday, and I'm going to have another challenge for you, too. Have a good week.